Hello guys and very welcome to this video. I will try to make this one a little shorter than I normally do. I will try to at least. So it's now time to take this to the motor vehicle inspection that we have here in Sweden and you can pretty much do this in two ways. You can either do it the SFRU way and uh, if you take that way here in Sweden you need at least five major changes to the car. And I have not decided to take it that way because I have tried to make this car to look as much as it did when it left the factory there. So I have done as little changes to it as possible. So if you remember when I started to work with this car there was a forklift motor in it and a Chinese uh, 400, 400 amp speed control that was sitting up here and it was pretty much just uh, it was pretty much just very messy inside of the engine bay there so my plan was to restore it without the parts that the car had from the beginning so uh, I find this Nissan Leaf motor system here and it was pretty much looking the same uh, as it did from the beginning here. So I have now just created this uh, box on top of everything. So now it looks a little more like it did when it left the factory. So I don't want this SFR way, however. That's the long way, the expensing, expensive way, and it's not the interesting way for me because I don't need that. This is already an electric car. I only need to upgrade the motor. So there is one more option. And that is to have this approved from the manufacturer. So I called the Swedish Volkswagen and talked to a guy there that take care of those questions and um, told him everything of my plans and uh, which kind of motor and uh, which power and uh, which torque this motor is going to produce. All that info I told him and gave him or mailed him. So he was looking at that and uh, should come back to me later on. But after two months, I called them again and asked if they had looked at the stuff that I sent them. And yes, they had done that. And they thought that this should not be any problem. So they will send me that certification later on. So I kept on working with the car and finally, suddenly, <laughs> I was ready with the car. Almost. So for around one month ago, I still did not have any certification on the car together with this motor, so I called them again and asked if there is any problem. I actually started to get a little bit nervous there, because if I don't have that certification on this car, well, then I have to go the SFR way and change, uh, for example, both the brakes in the rear and the front and the front and the rear axle to have those five major changes done to the car. And that will of course cost me a lot of money and also a lot of work then for something that is not needed if you ask me. So anyway, I called him again and he told me that yes, I will send you that certification tomorrow. So now I have it here in my hand and um, I have now also done the rest of the documentation because I would like to have those rims uh, together with this registration and some other smaller stuff that I have changed to the car. It's super important to have those uh, printed into this uh, certification later on when this car finally is going to be approved. I don't know if they will approve those rims. I hope so. It's not so much wider than it was from the beginning. So it will be interesting to see what they say about it. If they say something, I will of course just uh, throw on the original rims there. So I can have it uh, approved, of course. But the important thing is the motor. So now when I have this certification I can read inside of this paper here that they allow this car with a uh, motor up to 80 kilowatt and uh, 254 newton meters. I think it was that number. Yeah 254 newton meters 80 kilowatt and uh, they based that information that this car also was able in the GTI version. So this chassis is basically the same as that car. So that's why they will allow the, this motor in, the, in this car. Because the GTI version had an engine that was rated up to 118 kilowatt and 225 newton meters. And now we have 254 newton meters. It's a little higher, but it's still 
on the uh, safe side. So uh, they decided to uh, approve this uh, motor setup in this type of car. So now I have all the documentations that I need to make this car road legal. And by the way, if you've seen my earlier video, I did, uh, or the last video, I did some testing here to the DC charging port. And uh, I have now troubleshoot that because I did not have this system to work. So what I have now done is that I have changed the BMS because that BMS that was sitting in the car was newer than 2018. And the Resolve EV controller does not support any BMS newer than 2018 and not even a PDM that is newer than 2018 together with Shadow charging. So you need to have older stuff than that. So now I have changed that. So I only have a 24 kilowatt hour BMS hooked up to this 55 kilowatt hour battery pack here. So it will be interesting to see how it will handle everything when it will go under a zero percent state of charge and start to turtling and uh, maybe just turn off everything i don't know but i have a little secret special way that i can uh, use to trick this bms so i pretty much can charge it up to 100 percent in uh, seven minutes <laughs> and then i have the rest of it uh, uh, left in the battery bank there so I have now just looked a little about uh, when we are talking about uh, this BMS here. It, it doesn't seem to look so much at the cell voltages. It just seems to count the amount of current that leaves the battery and that goes into the battery again. Because uh, I thought that it would cross-check much more with the cell voltages, but uh, I cannot see that anymore. I thought that I saw that more with the... If, by the way, that was the 40 kilowatt hour BMS. Now we have the 24 kilowatt hour BMS again. Maybe that's a little more stupid than the newer one. However, I have to see that later how it will behave. But uh, as I said there, I changed that BMS and um, tried this out again without any success. And I did some more reading and troubleshooting. And finally, I did find that I had an old software inside of this Resolve EV controller. So I have now updated that one. And uh, that's pretty much where I am at right now. So if now the weather will clear up, which, uh, it does not seem to be so good right now. So I cannot do this today. I had hoped that I should be able to do this today, but uh, I have to test that another day. So that's one thing that I need to do also. So um, yeah. A lot of more talking about that DC charging uh, in another video then. But I am pretty sure that I have found a solution for this uh, quick charging anyway. Because for me at least, this quick, uh, this quick charging system is pretty important uh, in this car. And I will tell you why in another video. Alright guys! That was pretty much everything for this weekly update. All the documentation, a new cover that I have created here. Not so much. This paperwork have pretty much taken all my time here. So uh, yeah, it will be a great feeling when this is over. I will keep you updated. Thank you so much for watching guys. And uh, as always, I hope I see you next time. Take care and goodbye.